Hello guys, this is Alex for Precision Auto Source, and today I'm working on a 2018 Q7 Prestige. And just wanted to show you exactly what goes wrong or, or what the situation is after 100,000 miles. So I put this car on a lift and we're going to take a look at it. Took all the um, pans off, uh, belly covers, whatever you want to call them, just to make room for everything. So. Let's take a look and see what we find. At first glance, you could see this residue. Um, this is coolant, so we have a small coolant leak. Obviously very small because it's not overheating. Coolant level is uh, level as well, and I've been driving this for a good six months. So whatever leak it is, it's very small. I'm looking through there. Um, I will address that since I have a new uh, coolant water pump, uh, thermostat, everything. Valve covers, okay, there's absolutely no oil leak, which I am very, very surprised. Um, CV joints, boots, everything intact. Even the arms, the bushings, everything looks to be in very good condition, which I am very surprised. And this is what you get with a well-maintained one owner vehicle um, as I said no oil leaks you can see so see so for yourself this is just dust it's not coolant um, everything in really nice shape so whoever said uh, Audi's fall apart after a hundred or don't even reach a hundred thousand miles there you go drives perfectly absolutely no issues so um, as you could see in really good condition uh, one thing that I had did have a problem with is with this pipe and I did get a little bit of a crack over here and you could see I actually welded it a little bit over there just to not replace the whole pipe but that was the only issue that I had with it it was a really easy exhaust fix um, thinking about keeping this car and that's why I am thoroughly inspecting it which brings me to the main reason why I have this up on a lift um, in order to change the rear differential, the transaxle, the front, and I'm going to also do the transmission. Transmission, I was going to do the whole pan there on back order, so for now I'm just going to do a drain and fill. But uh, I will try to get a video as well as removing the brace. I know there's a lot of pictures and data online, but I have not seen a video, so I will try to capture that for those that want to DIY the transmission uh, or the, the transaxle center differential, whatever you want to call it, um, frame uh, bracket, taking this off. You're going to have to support the transmission, and uh, you have to undo these pipes, which... Most likely is because we're going to have to undo them from here. Um, I will videotape as much as I can while I'm doing it or after I'm doing it. And then I will explain the whole process. But again, just to give you an example, this is the top of the line prestige. And it has the luxury package, the four-wheel steering. You can see the motor over here. Absolutely everything. So pretty uh, pleasantly surprised on the condition of it. Okay, so update. We're doing the center diff first thing you want to do is disconnect this bungee cord let me get this to focus around the drive shaft so it doesn't fall down we're going to undo these brackets to the mount on both sides there's one two on each side and over here we're going to remove one two Three, there's four over there four and you're gonna need a triple square and then we're gonna do one two three four and I will get back all right so we got the brace down fairly simple obviously when you have a lift one thing that I wanted to mention as you could see I did not disconnect the parking brake because there was no need to this bolts down in here and it has a little guide that it sits on a little pin so you just unbolt it from there 
and that's it. There's no need really to disconnect the line. But uh, there you go. Thank you, Audi, and your great engineering just for that drain hole had to take apart half of the car. We will continue. And here we go. We opened up the fault plug and the drain plug. Let's take a look how this looks. The plug looked pretty untampered with, so I want to say this is the first time this has ever been changed. And yeah, just like I thought. Pretty nasty in there. I'm going to show you how it looks. As you can see, try to get this out of here. It smells cooked a little bit, but yeah, even in the light, it is pretty nasty. That is the used one. So yes, folks, I would definitely recommend changing your differential fluid, especially I have no sounds or anything. But I've read that people have some sound, so if you're getting that, it's probably, I wouldn't say too late, but it needs to be done unless it's grinding or doing some crazy sounds. But definitely get your center differential fluid done, and we'll go ahead and do some updates on the other ones once I get to them. Here we are at the front differential. Um, as you can see, we're going to drain over here it's on the bottom and the fill plug it's kind of hard for me to get it but it's right over here so always open the fill plug I forgot to mention that with the center one why because if you can't get the fill plug open and you already have drained the fluid out then uh, you're gonna have problems so let's take a look with a with the front one I already loosened this one up I'm curious to see what this one's going to look like. And we will see in a second here. I got a little collection device ready. It's going to make a mess, I'll tell you right now, because the little frame is over here already. Alright, so this is... Let's see. So this one is just as dark. Not quite as bad. Well, I don't know. Actually, it is. So that's the front one, guys. Um, yeah, definitely change your uh, differential fluids. And it actually does have a specific smell. All of them do. This one is more potent than the new one. Uh, so you could smell the burnt smell quite when you compare the new one and the old one. Next up is the rear. Alright, we're at the rear now. Fill plug is over there. Right there. Drain plug is over here. I've already loosened it. This cover over here, as you can see, I have it down for more access. It's just a uh, little uh, plastic little rivet thing. So let's take a look and see how this looks. Could already tell from it dripping out of the the uh, fill hole that it's a lot cleaner than both the center and the front. So let's take a look. Maybe it's just my imagination. Oops, oops. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, a lot cleaner. Oh, there's more of a amber. So that's that. As you can see, I made a mess over here, so get prepared. If you lower the cover, just pull it to the side so you don't do what I did. But I have a car and a lift, so it's manageable. All right, guys, back with the uh, transmission. Fill plugs over there, drain plugs over there. Out of the fill plug, I took out one quart uh, once I removed the drain plug, I took out another three. How did the fluid look after 100K? Well, look for yourself. It's uh, pretty dark. 
more than pretty dark. And just so you could see, here is the four quart right mark right there. So pretty much that's what I took out. Um, once you fill the transmission, it starts seeping off the fill hole. Start it up, put the plug back in obviously, start it up. And once it reaches a certain temperature, that certain temperature I think is around 110, memory serves me correct, Fahrenheit, you add more until it starts dripping out put it in and uh, put the plug in and you are done. Next up, water pump. While we're doing the maintenance on this, we're done with the differentials. We're gonna do the oil change as well, might as well. For the first time, I am trying this Motul oil out. A lot of you know that these uh, 3.0Ts, um, a lot of people have been talking about oil consumption. And luckily at 100,000 miles, the I think I've put on fifth, meh, maybe 10,000 miles on it, uh, maybe a little bit over. I usually, I would say in between I do my oil changes. Well, this is my second one at 6,000 miles. And I ended up putting a little bit less than a quart in 6,000 miles. So I don't think that's excessive, but I want to see if changing it with this oil, different... Uh, uh, type of oil different additives makes any difference so we're going to go ahead and uh, change the oil with that uh, for those of you that have not done oil changes um, you can on these models yes if you want to do a suction there it is but I already had the pans off and everything so might as well do it the old-fashioned way so that's what I did and I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up the oil filter is over there and um, obviously you put your oil filter back and there it is fill in with the uh, appropriate amount I believe correct me if I'm wrong I think on this it was a little bit over seven quarts um, after this we will tackle the water pump as you saw previously when I went underneath it I've never got the light uh, as far as low coolant or anything, but it is a little bit on the low side. I'm going to open up the light here so you can see it from up top too. Um, I can see some residue of coolant. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change it with a metal one just because. And I might go ahead and change the belt too just to make sure that we have everything in tip top shape. So I'll report back with uh, the progress. All right, there we have it, guys. Left is the new metal graph um, water pump, the metal impeller, and left, the right is the new one. And you will see it was leaking right here. A little bit of crust over there, and also over there. I'm guessing that is part of the whole vacuum system maybe where it actually came somewhere in there I don't know but after a hundred thousand mile seems free no play so even though it's plastic it's still in really good condition now I'm gonna give you guys a crash course I'm not gonna go completely over the whole thing this is more for people who are somewhat familiar with the car like I am but uh, we just want a crash course so these two pipes Make sure you disconnect them, um, pull the uh, clamps down, disconnect them. There's one bolt over there and one bolt down there that holds the whole pipe. Um, you disconnect the pulley for the supercharger over there. Do not disconnect, uh, do not uh, take off the serpentine belt until you remove the pulley over here because you're gonna have to take off these bolts and the belt will help you keep it in place so after you take that off mine just pretty much fell off um, remove the belt or, or take the tension off of it that right there is the tensioner and uh, there's a seal obviously and reverse is installation in the hall. It's really not a bad job at all. I took this cross member over here 
off so it's not in my face. You could probably do it with it in there, but it's it's not going to be fun. So that is the water pump. We're going to do that. I am not going to do the thermostat since it has no problems. I uh, will take my chances on that because I don't feel like taking off the supercharger. And who knows how long my wife will keep this car. Probably not long enough from all the service that I did anyway. All right, so water pump is in. Everything assembled and running really good. Absolutely no issues. Pretty easy job, if you ask me. Um, next up, I wasn't have this plan, but since I'm doing it, why not? And again, quick version. Air filter, this uh, big air box on the top. There's one bolt over here that holds it in, in place. And this is kind of fitted on here um, with some force. So I'm not going to do it because I only have one hand. Put this in here, push it in. You'll see there's a, a gasket. Lube that up with something just to make sure it goes in correctly. And you're good to go. So that is the engine air filter. All right, guys. Well, there she is, all completed. So we did the, or I did, the... Center differential, front differential, rear differential, drain and fill the transmission fluid, and water pump. And I'll have time tags on everything on YouTube so you guys could skip quickly. Again, this is just a crash course on how to do these things, not necessarily um, a DIY from A to Z, but it will get you through the job if you're guessing on some things. If you found this video helpful or if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And if you did find it helpful, please uh, give me a thumbs up or subscribe. Thank you.